Hi, I'm Suzanne. In today's video, we're going to paint a white egret. Now, you know I like to paint birds. I love to paint birds. And I particularly love wading birds. Um, you saw the video that I did of the great blue heron, right? Well, this is the white egret. And I have to back up and tell you, I was inspired to do this because I was actually wanting warmth. We just got dumped on with about three inches of snow here in Kingsport, Tennessee. It's the first it's the first snow that we had all season. And you would think that I would probably rather paint something like a snow scene. Well, no, I really wanted warmth. I wanted summer. I wanted everything <laughs> that was warm. So I chose to use colors that were really hot. I used a lot of um, um, uh, Indian yellow, cadmium yellow, oranges, you know, just, ugh, I was just grabbing for heat. And this bird uh, happens to be in the photo reference that I used. He was waiting in a marshy area. And so you had the reflection of the, the grasses from the marsh, which were a lot of burnt siennas and again, yellow ochres, very warm colors. And so this was actually done with somewhat of a limited palette. So here's the actual piece that we will paint. And uh, I will take you from start to finish, step by step on how I created this painting of the white egret. So stick around, check me out at the end. We'll talk about how all the ins and outs of this particular piece and uh, enjoy. Here we go. Ah, okay, so here's our setup today. Painting at home on a nice snowy day here in Kingsport, Tennessee. I wanna let you know what our colors are. I've got them all also lined up here. So it's actually to remind me what I'm using. You'll see I have titanium white set out in a couple different areas and that's mainly so um, I can keep my whites clean. So this is kind of going to be my egret colors. I've got the titanium white. I have, this is Pale Violet by Michael Harding. I have Richardson's Manganese Violet and Sennelier's Natural Tint. Of course I have the titanium white again and then I have a bunch of grass and marsh colors. <laughs> so I have Indian Brown. I have, okay, I have French Yellow Ochre. I have, okay, that's Indian Brown and Burnt Sienna. I have Indian Yellow here. I have Yellow Lake, some more Titanium White. Over here I have, hmm, this is, I don't have it out here for some reason. That actually is, it is Red umber, I think it's Italian red umber. Then I have Van Dyke Brown. I have, oh, what do we have here? Um, raw umber. Then this is the Italian green umber. And of course the titanium white. So here's the selection of our colors. And I have a selection of brushes too. I'll call it out as I go. Um, I've just in my little place over here. I've just got a little gam saw and a little tiny bit of um, linseed oil and we'll go ahead and start. This is going to be an 8, eight by 10. The substrate is actually um, a gessoed panel with a little bit of tooth. It's not super super slick but it's pretty smooth. Um, it's just got enough rough on it but it's, it's actually pretty thin. So let's go ahead and get started. That the whole idea that I was going to do a wipe out isn't going to work, so I'm going to have to approach this a little bit differently. I'm going to move this off just till it's right a little bit in my way. So I'm going to just take a little bit of white and suggest that I'm going to put my bird. And of course, everything's subject to change, but. A lot of this may change quite a bit. Um, as 
I kind of move through this a little bit. So I know that doesn't look like much, but I'm going to work on trying to get that to be a white bee grip. So. so I'm mixing a color, basically. This color going on, which is going to be the sky, is a combination of pale violet, a little bit of natural tint by Sennelier, and uh, a little titanium white. And I'm, I'm just kind of laying that down and I love how the yellow is kind of shining through. This is a very loose, loose uh, background at first. Since I am working on a slick surface, so we're gonna have to have a little dry time till it's completely opaque. But I am carving out my bird. Uh, since I wasn't able to really wipe out, I'm carving out the bird. And you can see I'm using a lot more of the uh, pale violet in the background and I'll mix a little bit of yellow, um, a little yellow ochre. I like that grayness. Um, and of course, mixing uh, complementary colors together makes really nice grays for me. So just kind of blocking that in. And I'm using a, I believe that's a number five. Um, I keep switching between my brushes here. I think that's a number five um, Eclipse Long Filbert. And I'm just wanting that very soft background. So I need those edges in the background to blend. And I'm putting, it's a combination of the, uh, it's, ooh, what is that color? Oh, that's um, Indian, Indian yellow with titanium white. And I'm just kind of using a soft brush just to blend, soft, soften those edges up because you know how I love soft edges. may not work, I'll try. I'm gonna take paint thinner and try to regain my shape of my bird. And just, you know, it's got that very... And some of this is probably gonna be a little bit more in. But if I say that this arch here is this bird's back, So I'm able to remove some of the paint now. And there'll be a layer in here. This will come down. This will level. Kind of comes out a little bit here. Start getting paint on my too much paint on my brush. Being very from here's a break. I, I look for breaks and I see a break here. Then it kind of flattens out right here. Then it cuts back in. So we're taking this paint off. transparency here okay so I'm liking that so far okay now I'm gonna use a small I have my little small this is a um, number two sable um, I don't have my glasses on <laughs> maybe I should have my glasses on to tell you to actually read the brush the brush is a um, 99 series. It's one. This is one of the little short-handled um, miniature sets. 
by Rosemary. I love it. So, okay, so I, I'm gonna make some other corrections to try to get my bird shape in. So, of course, this is gonna come down here. And it almost cuts in. And it'll be a little triangle here. Just leave it at that for now. Because here, let me use that little flat again that I was using. The little flat that I was using a few minutes ago that I was taking paint off with is a long flat. It's an evergreen long flat number two. And um, so this part of the bird. Actually, this I'm going to just take a little bit of purple and all this blue, this light violet, suggest. And I'm going to grab a little bit of that pink. This is going to be very subtle. Now I'm using a little titanium white, a little bit of the rose matter genuine. at first but so like even the center of this bird's head Violet, mixing a little of the Sonalier natural tint to it, and that is perfect. I love it. It may seem dark at first, but bear with me. matter. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. So I keep having to remind myself. A little bit by a little bit. Pulling that down a bit. I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of linseed oil just to move this paint around a little bit. Pulling it down. I don't want to pull it down far because I do need a lot of contrast. There's going to be some, quite a bit of contrast that needs to happen here. So I'm going to pop in some really intense. Um, hmm. I'm going to take a. Uh, 
the um, Indian yellow and titanium white. And go right up in here. And I'm, I'm almost not gonna let the brush leave the, uh, I'm bringing this in. I have it a little bit too much on the bird. So I'm, I'm also carving the shape of my bird, if, if you will. Actually, Tuscan Earth by Sennelier. It's a, it's a very nice earthy color. I'm switching over to the more ready, right underneath that color here. I've always got to go right off into the corners, and I will sweep it up a little bit. I'm going to take a little burnt sienna too, and pull that down in here. But I'm just going to sweep up. I, um, I'm going to use the edge of this brush. I'm suggesting that there's and I can always add more if I adjust for my bird a little bit. Now there's going to be a huge amount of a dark, basically a dark value that's going to come up because there's going to be a just like a, a little hill, if you will, and some water here. I am going to add a very dark value in here. And I'm suggesting that there's almost like a bank. And uh, just putting that darker value in here. So I mixed, um, actually I mixed lamp black and the red umber and I'm wanting to lay in the uh, foreground a little bit and so I'm using a lot of the same colors we started with and I'm adding the sparkles. So what you're seeing is those little spots going in. It's just the bright little sparkles that sunlight will catch on the grasses and stuff. And I'm just still blocking this bird and I'm going back and forth between the background and the foreground and the bird. Um, this is really a delightful piece and I'm having so much fun with it. Let's see if we can do this here. This is where I wish I had a mall stick for here. I'm just gonna start putting some of the whites in here.
just using this little tiny brush. This is just a number two series 99. This is a pure sable. Sometimes I'll load the brush just, eh, if you can see here, just so it's just, eh, it's hard to see right there. See that kind of load and it keeps, creates that little lip. <clears throat> Sometimes that little lip is going to do the job for me. Ugh. This is when I really need a mall stick. But we'll fix that in a little bit. It's a little bit too much, but it's okay. Get, there's going to be some more dark value that goes in here, the background of the sky. Ugh, got something else in there. Take that off. I've got my little Q-tips here too. This is when I really wish I had my paint scraper. My little light light tint of an orange here mainly white paint but with just a little bit of orange in it I'm coming in here because there's just really subtle huh, subtle colors that's in here Using the pale violet and manganese violet, and just pull that into you. Now this is dry enough. I can I kind of can lead my hand on this. that into that orange that I just put down. Yeah, that's good. It really does need me to keep my hand on here. So this, folks, is the second day. And it makes all the difference in the world. Of the detail in the face since I'm here. Actually, I need to kind of do some of this in here. The interesting sky color. I still have some of that is wet and I am going to put some of that in there. And if you remember from yesterday, it was it's a lot of different combinations of purpley grays and yellows that make up this color. And I'm just going to 
grab a tiny bit of the Sennelier Natural Tint. I need it to be a little bit more intense in here to really appreciate the, the shapes I have. Here. Really, really wore that out there. Okay. No, this looks because it's wet, it looks really dark here, but it's not as dark as it looks. <clears throat> It'll dry lighter. see where the paint is going to <clears throat> settle if that makes any sense I don't want to go back into the bill some of my colors that I mixed yesterday did dry even with the I put saran wrap on them to kind of preserve them but it doesn't always work green color and I'm using um, yellow lake and um, <clears throat> combination of yellow lake and uh, pale violet I'm going to turn my I'm working by sunlight. Sorry, I'm turning this so I have more sunlight and less shadow. <clears throat> okay, I am going to take a little bit of raw umber, try to keep it just on the tip of the brush, but we'll see how this goes. Now there is a light, a white area that will happen here, but I can't put that in yet. It's um, let's see if I can get some of this in here. I'm mixing, I'm taking um, Yellow Lake, and Yellow Lake, oh, it's, is it Yellow Lake Deep or Indian Yellow? It's Yellow Lake Deep actually. Let's see if I can do this without bulking this up too much. Tip of the, it's very yellow. Some of this might happen when it's when I can sit down with it on a flat surface and it's completely dry for some of this detail that I'm trying to add. I'm desperately. <laughs> Desperately trying and it's not working.
So I made my pink yesterday. I did use a little bit of scarlet, the scarlet red, and um, made a tint. So there's a little bit more of this in here. Just a bit, right up to the line. Soften up some of this, the intensity of this color here. I just squirted out some clean titanium white. And here. Now I have to be constantly aware of the actual form of the bird. Now the dark value that you see in, in the center of the head and neck, that's the actual head and neck of the bird. So it will appear darker because light can't go through it. And the pink and orange edges, those little peachy edges, is actually the light going through the feathers. So I have to make it very subtle. And that's the challenge with this particular piece is that I'm trying to keep the subtlety of the actual form of the bird versus the feathers of the bird and wanting to just, you know, so you can see I keep going back and forth with that. Okay, I'm gonna use this number two evergreen long flat. And I'm gonna really try to, because I, if you'll remember yesterday, I was trying to wipe off paint with q-tips and it was really tough so I'm gonna I know that there's gonna be some warmth in some of this color but I really feel like I have to get this light down There's a lot more of the feather and activity I need to do in here, but I can't really do it. So I'll be cutting around things. I'll be working around some of this area. You can see that I'm going to add a peachy color uh, towards the edges right here. Um, and, and there's always that transitional color that is taking you from the darker inside value of the bird to the exterior part where the light is hitting this or backlighting this bird. So the peachy color was made by using a uh, Scarlet Lake and um, uh, a little bit of uh, Indian yellow and titanium white. And I have to make those transitions. Now there's very little detail actually going into the body of the bird, but the lighter value that you see me popping in there is a combination of the um, violet, you know, pale violet and just a pink color to create the form of feather and just suggesting it, not really putting in a lot of detail. I'm gonna use the quarter inch uh, evergreen dagger and I'm gonna work on some of the grass, okay? We're gonna go ahead and speed it up just a little bit though.
having just a little bit of dry time does make um, popping in these light values a lot easier because I don't have a lot of blend picking up the background color, etc. Now I am ah, maybe a bit too impasto here, but I wanted to really make my whites white and I will be doing a little bit of adding of other colors here in a little bit, but the overall feel of this painting is really pleasing to me. I like all the light. I've been craving, <laughs> I've been craving warmth. Here we are at the tail end of winter and we got dumped on with a ton of snow. <laughs> so I'm just like, give me warmth, give me warmth. But you can see I'm really lighting this bird up. And uh, yeah, this is, this is totally a fun piece. Hey, and guys, if you have any questions about anything I'm covering here, if, whether it's about the brushes, the paints, etc., or anything, just, uh, you know, leave it in the comment section and I'll get to it. And uh, I'll, I'll see if I can answer that for you. Now, you can see I'm really going in pretty heavy with this color, but I'm going on top of light and I'm adding yellows as I go a little bit. You can see that the, the terminal ends of those long feathers are pretty yellow and that's good. And I'm adding just a little bit of white on top of them. So I'm trying, I'm using that small number two, um, sable and it is doing the trick for me. I could be using the, uh, the dagger brush as well, but no, this seems to be doing the trick. And I'm trying to do those light edges of the feathers and just really building it up here. I'm getting down to the last little bit of detail and I'm changing up some of the bill a little bit. Uh, I've got to kind of refine some of the things I have in the face of the bird. This value should be much darker. It's an actually a dark green section, but it was almost as light. It was a little too light, so I'm darkening it up a little bit. And just changing a little bit and putting in the details where I need. And um, I'm about to wrap it up. This really has been a fun piece and I hope that you've enjoyed it and if you did please give me a thumbs up and again any questions leave it in the comment section and uh, yeah Just adding the last little detail in the grass with the sword brush. And I'll, I'll start with the darker values and work my way up to the lighter values in the grass. And I kind of mix it up a little bit. And you can see really how wonderful this brush can really 
just make really refined, small little blades of grass. And I keep going back and just picking up some light. And you see, you've got to alternate, you know, your grass shapes. Please, please, please don't just do like sticky up little straight grasses all the time. You've got to mix it up a little bit. And you see, I go backwards and sideways and all over the place with this. And I'm about to wrap it up. I, I have really, really enjoyed this piece. And yeah, the, and the grass just makes it. And all the little light. You can see the light values and little spots. And, you know, just where the light is catching the grass. And, oh my gosh, this has been so much fun. Now, you know, there's little tiny droplets of water that will also be... Um, where the light catches it and of course I'll mix up a little bit of dark values in there too and you can see me really sawing it in there just getting that grass and of course this is the foreground grass so here's where you do have some detail and the reflection in the water um, I'm trying to get it all in <laughs> and I'm still using the sword brush the sword brush or the dagger brush in this case they're very versatile brushes very wonderful I love using them as you know and um, yeah shaking up the grass a little bit changing the shape but folks, we're about to wrap it up. And uh, I have to say, this has been fun. And uh, yeah, they're doing the lighter values now and just putting the lightest grasses in. And it's going in, it's almost done. And here, folks, is the finished piece. And this has been so much fun. I really needed all this hot color <laughs> to make my day. And I hope you definitely enjoyed today's video. And again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. And you can see the detail in the head. Um, there's very little detail really in this piece, but it was all about color and light. See, wasn't that fun? I have to say, one of the things that I enjoyed the most about painting this piece was putting all the sparkle. You know, the, the, being that this bird is a wading bird, he's generally near water, so I had the sparkle and glisten of water. And yes, I also enjoyed putting the cool colors of the purples and the cool pinks in on the shadow of the bird against all that warmth, all the other color that I used. And it was so much fun. There's, you know, funny thing is, there's really not a lot of detail in this piece. Maybe the most detail is in the face area, but even in the grasses and in the bird itself, it's really about color and contrast. So this was a lot of fun and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you did, give me a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions about anything I covered in this particular painting, please leave it in the comments section and I'll get to you. I promise. And uh, yeah, and maybe you have a suggestion of something else you'd like for me to paint that you'd like to see. Uh, I do want to remind everybody, of course, that I do have a wildlife uh, painting workshop coming up in May. That is May 27th, 28th, and 29th here in Kingsport, Tennessee. And it will be it probably the best working situation I've ever had for a workshop. It's a beautiful, beautiful space. We've got elevators available so you don't have to schlep your stuff up a staircase. We have so much natural light, great places to eat, and we're gonna do some fun stuff in the evening. So yeah, come join me here in Kingsport, Tennessee for this workshop and we'll have fun. Okay, well folks from Kingsport, Tennessee, I wanna say thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.